Paul Wariga is my name. I'm an economist by profession, uh, practicing the same in terms of teaching and research, especially in development economics at Makere University. Businesses are born and then many businesses die. Um, some die in their first year, some die after, say, five years, others die after actually flourishing for a very long period of time. We've seen global companies around the world collapsing. But coming back to those that collapse after a very short time, one, some people start businesses with the wrong reasons. Some people start businesses with the wrong reasons. And the moment you start businesses with the wrong reasons, um, the chances of success are slim. But then um, there, is, there are certain factors that are also outside the control of uh, business owners. Uh, for example, the business environment the business environment. The business environment may not be favorable to any business and uh, once that environment changes at a time when the business has just been started, the chances of success have become very slim. Recently you've had the COVID crisis. I guess you and me know that some people had actually started the businesses. Uh, right now uh, the political environment in uh, Khartoum cannot allow any, any business to really uh, flourish. Cannot allow any business to really uh, flourish. Those two, of course, coupled with others like lack of management skills, um, failure to balance between, um, between debt and what you have as your own money as part of the, the fair balance, business groups call it leverage, um, can also uh, perpetuate, can also cause a business to uh, collapse, cause a business to collapse. And many other reasons that we may not really um, exhaust right now. Business success, um, just like I've talked about the factors that, that uh, those three factors that really lead to failure of businesses, one of them is out of the control of the business entrepreneur himself, and that is the projects and in the business environment generally. Um, one solution is if government is interested in seeing to it that businesses, especially private businesses, do flourish, it has to put in place um, measures that ensure that the business environment is supportive of private uh, entrepreneurship. That is the key solution because it lies within the will of government to make sure that the business environment is what is uh, conducive for businesses to flourish. Very many youth, uh, th uh, when they are finishing their schools or universities, very few uh, come up with business ideas and succeed. Most of them go for job seekers. Even those who have businesses, at least they have failed to manage them. Uh, what's hindering the youth today uh, in maintaining their business? Uh, business continuity, especially where the original founder of the business has passed on, continues to be a problem, especially on our continent. Personally, and of course specifically in Uganda, personally I've cited uh, two reasons. One, the original entrepreneurs, like in Uganda, with my experience, have not done enough to involve the children that succeed them in their business operations. A parent leaves his or her child, who is fully grown up, a university going child at home, and then he goes to Chikubo, downtown Kampala, and then he does whatever he does, and then, he, I mean, he runs his business without involving this child at home. So, if bad luck comes and the parent passes on, basically the child 
is not aware of the operational aspects of the family business or the family business. Where are the sources of uh, possibly the goods that are being sold in this family business? Um, if, if these sources are outsourced from outside the country, the child is not even aware of the documentation that it takes to get some of these items from outside Uganda. So if parents or entrepreneurs do not involve their children in these business operations right from um, when these children are able enough to understand how businesses operate, it will be hard for a child simply to begin from nowhere and uh, make this business uh, continue. Of course, um, I have personally come to think of uh, the reason why this is still difficult is that many businesses in Uganda operate on dishonesty. It's in the outside world do the opposite. They do the opposite. And if you've seen some of the businesses that have succeeded here or that have continued some for some good time after the passing on of the, the original founders, these businesses, there is some evidence that the children have been involved in these businesses even when the parents are still alive. Madvan Sugar, Wava Muno, still alive but the children are in there. Uh, we've seen um, the late Murwana's nice house of plastics and uh, the late accompanies. Madame Barbara Murwana, I think, she was part of uh, this business even when her sweet dad was still alive. The dad gets to impart some of the business skills, some of the structural decision making uh, skills that are needed to make sure that the business uh, thrives. So, to me, I look at that as one of uh, the reasons. But then, the other reason I can talk about, especially with our current youth, is one, current youth dream big and they also want to start big. They also want to start big. Uh, there is a saying that it's better to dream big, but start what? But start small. Um, because of that line of thinking, many of our youths have failed to succeed. Not knowing that actually businesses start small and they grow with time. Most of the big entrepreneurs that we are seeing around the country have been in those businesses for a very long time. Our youths want to start today and tomorrow they are driving powerful vehicles. Tomorrow they are making pompous weddings and all of that. This is one of the reasons. Um, it will depend on the kind of success one is looking at. Numerous people define success differently. There are a myriad of uh, definitions that people can attach to success. But if I'm to talk about economic success, the equation to wealth creation is one, making sure that you earn more than you spend. You earn more than you spend. And then to the youths, uh, le le let me teach you something that I've come to realize um, after these many, many years of uh, studying and then of being around before you came around. Uh, there are about, I mean, there are four, I think four stages, we shall know the number, stages to economic prosperity. There is having money, there is being rich, and then being wealthy. Three stages, these three stages. You begin by having money, two, you go to becoming rich, and then being wealthy. These three stages are different from each other and each stage requires different actions, different actions. Um, I, I, I always want to, 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 to use some of these words that one, people with money are bright people. People with money are bright people. You must be bright to have money. People who are rich are clever. People who are rich are clever people. 
you need to be clever to become rich to become wealthy calls for wisdom you must have wisdom to be wealthy why it is hard for instance to become rich but it is even harder to stay rich it is hard to become wealthy but it's even harder to stay wealthy wealthy people work because they love to work rich people work because they are supposed to work in order to really maintain the rich the riches that they have people with money must work to have the money must work to have the money these ones must work the others have to work the wealth love to work can she be with both of them the three of them the all wealthy people are rich people and they have money not all rich people are wealthy all rich people are people who have money not all people who have money are rich so only somebody who is wealthy will claim to have all the three because a wise person is is definitely bright and clever but not every bright person is wise you know youth fail to to distinguish between these for example there are certain businesses that are meant to be started and operated by rich people but not i mean by rich people there are certain businesses that are for the wealthy for example why should somebody who has a capital who has a capital of 30 million shillings go for real estate business that is business for the wealthy people when you have for example 30 million shillings it means you are still having to some small extent though you are still having cash flow problems yet cash flow problems are some of the problems that you must solve first before you move to the next step of being rich why should you go into businesses dealing in agroforestry why should you go into plant trees because tomorrow you want to eat but you have gotten all the 30 million shillings and bought these plots of land and then tomorrow you fail to get somebody to buy them but you need to eat you need to rent you need daily cash flow that is business for the wealthy wealthy people who have already accumulated the assets you get me that bring in money he can afford to borrow 100 million shillings in a piece of land but if you go if you are a person on this other stage that I talked about having money and then you go for example for real estate dealership you get me the business rent is your estate because you can buy plots of uh, five, 5 million you can buy six of them then you're making a mistake because in the case you fail to sell this real estate the, the plots you will not be able to sustain your cash i mean you will not be able to solve your cash flow problems you want to behave like a wealthy guy who already has apartments he has farms he has what and all these ones bring in money you get the point okay. all these ones bring in money so even the business you start you must first of all understand at what stage are you in as far as those three stages to economic prosperity are concerned there are certain businesses that are not for the rich but they are for the wealthy there are certain businesses that are not for the those who have money but they are for the rich indeed even the wealthy there are certain businesses which are below their class you cannot expect sudiru paleria to start a chapati stall he can he won't though he can afford but he won't but you have 500000 shillings the easiest business for you to start is a chapati stall which will bring for you money every day so that you can solve your cash flow problems there is a stage in the economic prosperity life where you reach and you do not have a cash flow problems million shillings is not a problem you have 5 million you already have the social capital that can come to your risk in case you need money 
what do you think of saving and borrowing? What's your take on this? Saving, to start a business? yes, Sa uh, saving and borrowing. Mm. Borrowing is not bad, but what are you going to use the money for, which you have borrowed? Saving is one of the very, very first things that somebody who is going to start, who is planning to start a business should do, start with. For example, may I believe that it's not good to start your business with 80% debt. Your money should be more, should be more than 50% of the equity, of the money you want to invest in a business, than what you are borrowing. For example, if to start a chapati store, you need 500, you should have 400, and then you borrow the 100. You get me? But how do you uh, start a chapati store equivalent 500,000 shillings and you are borrowing 450 and you only have 50 what? 50,000. The other thing is saving is one of the attributes that somebody who will be successful in life economically should embrace. The only problem is that youths and even generally people think that one we save after spending on whatever we wanted to spend on. Saving is a function of somebody's income. You get me? It's a function of somebody's what? Income. What you earn gives you part of what you should save. The first thing is that you must decide on how much, what is the proportion of savings that you want to make from the income that you earn. That is the first question that you must answer. And once you, for example, say I'm going to save 30% of what I earn, then when you earn, it's better to get off the 30%, save it, then you can think of spending the 70%. What do people do? I may not say only the current youth, but even people generally in Uganda that I've interacted with. He gets, he or she gets 10,000, he wants first of all solve his other Eh? Problems. Problems or needs, you get me? And then what remains is what he or she saves. That is a mistake. Because once you have money, spending it is the easiest. Making it is very hard, but spending it is the what? Is the easiest. Hence, the need to think three times the thinking you made when making money before spending it. If you took one week, thinking to get the money. It's better to take three weeks thinking of how to do what? To spend the money. Because making the money, making this money, replacing this money is very, very hard. So one, we save first before we start spending. But saving is simply a necessary condition in as far as moving towards economic prosperity is what? Is concerned. The sufficient condition is how you transform these savings in, and channel them into productive investments. Because when you get 10,000, my brother, and you put it in a tin under your bed for five years, you'll find it. But you'll find five, I mean 10,000. So the most important thing is how you channel these savings into productive investments. To me, that's what matters most. It means, what does this imply? It implies that you must understand yourself first and then plan. The moment you follow simply, blindly, what others are doing, you might, uh, you might fall into a ditch. But then number two, surround yourself with the people who have the same mission like you. Surround yourself with people who have the same mission like you. We are simply we are simply an average of the five people that we usually interact with. It is a bit hard if you surround yourself with um, if you surround yourself with people whose aspirations are low. Uh, if I use this example. I mean, these friends of mine may, might stop giving me lifts. But I want to, to give you an example of uh, border border people. You get me? And then special higher guys. You get me? I want to believe that these people think differently. 
You get me? Yes. Their means of production is different, so they think differently. The Baganda have a saying that Mbulida Goita na ye Mkubudi de Mpisazu. Simply trying to, to, to really tell you that the people you surround yourself with matter a lot. There is one other thing that people, especially the youth, have to avoid the fear of failure. The fear of failure. We learn more from our failures than from our successes. Failure is a chance for you to perfect more. Businesses fail. But by the mere fact that there are those that have succeeded, it means when you try again and learn from your past failures, success will come knocking. You know it is risky, not to risk. It's more risky, not risk at all. You better try and, and then you fail. Yes, it is more risky, not risk at all. And we learn more from our failures than we do from our success. I don't feel like we should end here. But, Doctor, uh, how can the youth uh, people in Uganda prepare themselves for success? Mm. Um, I would like to change that question. Mm. How can they prepare themselves for success? Success is not somewhere waiting for them that they should prepare. They should work for it. Good things come to those who go out and make them happen. They don't come to those who wait. I think I'm clear about that. Yes. Success has to be worked for. Because good things come to those who go out and make them happen. They don't come to those who sit and wait. How do you how should Ugandan youths work or prepare and work for success? I want to say something that I've seen among many youth in Uganda. Many youth in Uganda, especially ladies, but even some many gentlemen, uh, tend to think that um, prayer is in the success equation, that prayer brings success which is not true. Prayer does not bring success. In the success equation, prayer is not there. I want to tell you where prayer is. Prayer is in the revelation equation. Prayer reveals where success is likely to be. It is only those who work hard, you get me, and get out who will succeed. So prayer is in the revelation equation. Decision making and proper, I mean proper decision making and hard working is in the success equation. Prayer alone can only reveal where success lies. It will tell you that behind this dark cloud there is a silver lining. You get me? And the prayer will stop there. And remember, you are not the only person who is praying, please. God is for all of us. Actually, God only comes in your midst when you are three people praying. After that, differences in us will be determined by our levels of hard work and proper decision making. That is something I would like to tell the youth. Prepare yourself by correctly making your decisions, right? Playing your cards right. Know who you are. Know who you are. Where are you coming from? What are your goals? Pursue them. You get me? Relentlessly. Pursue them. You get me? Prayer reveals. Work hard. Pursue your goals. But don't say really depend on prayer. Prayer is for revelation purposes. Uh, what are your morning routines and how do you start a day as an economist or as an entrepreneur? Mm. Um, 
One, I start by looking at my to-do list. My to-do list. What am I supposed to accomplish today? When and where? That is my very first beginning. Of course, that is when I'm leaving my house. But when I come out of my bed, definitely I first of all have to have a short prayer, dedicate my day to the Lord, then look at my to-do list. Whatever I'm supposed to do, once I complete it, I take it. Whatever I'm supposed to do, once I complete it, I take it. Whatever I'm supposed to do, once I complete it, I take it. And I start uh, by accomplishing those ones that are easier. You get me? So that they can give me motivation. That's why sometimes um, I may not even come to office here because one, I have to be at BTM TV first. That's where I go. That's why when Bruce sometimes calls me, call, call, I mean, when, when he makes a call, I tell him, you know what? I'm available, but tomorrow I am not. I'm around, but I'm not available. I'm around, but not available for tomorrow. Maybe the other day, so that I can again write another to-do list, change it and all that. So I evaluate myself every day. One statement I should leave with you is that poverty is the worst curse on planet Earth. It is the worst curse on planet Earth. It is something that you should avoid by hook or crook. Poverty. Two, self-transformation begins with you, not government, not any other person. Because the consequences of impoverishment and not being transformed are born directly by you. If you are to talk about poverty and underdevelopment, the brutality of these two, 95% of them, of poverty and underdevelopment, the brutality is first at the micro level, at the individual level, not at the macro. At the macro, you only find five. So, action to transform yourself begins largely, 95%, with you. We have been with Dr. Paul Wabiga, an economist, a lecturer at Makere University. Uh, thanks for watching our program. Thanks for watching the only show that is going to transform your life to success none other than strategies of success follow us on our social media platforms social uh, success strategies africa uh, linkedin facebook uh, you can also send an email on info at success strategies africa at gmail.com also i call upon for those who are willing to share us with their success stories please hit our comments like and share also leave your thoughts those who want to collaborate us with with, uh, with business, those who are also willing uh, to, for mindset changes, those who are willing. I want also to remind you that we soon we are going to resume our business meetups. Mm -hmm.